Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching Agile Soft Tester Certification. Uh, I've been a little away for a few days uh, just because of uh, some corporate sessions and I was traveling frequently, but I'm back for you and I'll be uh, continuously having sessions from here again. Uh, Today we will be talking about the chapter one, the second topic that is aspects of agile approaches and we have few more topics to go ahead. And today we are discussing in this tutorial about retrospectives. So generally when you talk about the retrospectives, it's all about gathering lessons learned put together for every single iteration, what is being conducted. Now when you talk about agile methodology, we do it after each iteration and generally this retrospective will have different objectives put together like we have different objectives as a part of retrospective. Now, when you talk about retro retrospective, it's just like a meeting held between the different stakeholders, like including the business uh, representative, developers and testers, putting together that what we have done so far, what is that we need to do? And what is that we are facing as challenges or maybe, you know, what we could have done better? What is that we we could have you know covered as a part of this iteration and what is that we could not complete as a part of this iteration as well so uh, jd gathering lessons to help you to improvise your process uh, let you know that where you stand will also let you know about your pace that how you have been doing so far and what you can gear up or maybe what you're getting delayed with and what are the showstoppers which are holding you back to do that job so generally we take care of all these things and uh, we have a lot of factors which it generally includes as a part of like uh, you know, coverage or maybe measuring that what we have delivered so far, what is that we should have been doing so far and the documentation, closure of the iteration, stating the logs, uh, writing the updated reports and many other things. So generally, it, it, it depends on the organization level that how the retrospective will be conducted and also like uh, what the you know process will be. If you want, you can have a sequential process as well for the retrospective or maybe as light as possible. You can also say that it can be just a quick meeting between the team members of the development team, Scrum Master, maybe business, uh, business uh, representative and so on. And coming to the, of course, the role of the testers, it really plays a vital role being a tester in this retrospective where you contribute from the point of quality and determine that what exactly is all about, like what you have been doing so far, because coming from an end user perspective, being a tester, you can do the best by contributing the best inputs to the retrospective to make the very next iteration more enhanced and improvised. When coming to the traditional approaches, we do conduct this, but we do it only after the project ends. So if you remember your foundation level certification, we did it in the test process and we did it only once all the entire process was over. But here we just do it every single iteration at the end of every single iteration. When it completes, you conduct a retrospective. And to the end, I say that retrospectives are really beneficial because instead of getting surprised that what you missed in the entire project better you can target in each iteration so that you can improvise yourself or correct yourself or you can map yourself right from the second iteration itself so that's all from this tutorial team uh, thanks for watching the video we will be coming back with another tutorial also uh, in case uh, you have any questions you're free to comment below i'll be there to assist you and give you more justification on that till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the content take care team happy learning